Greetings, everyone. Um, happy Friday. Welcome to this afternoon's webinar. My name is Melissa. Um, I am like a little background elf who uh, handles buttons. <laughs> oh, no. While... <laughs> well, Todd does the magic. And yeah, so I do push buttons here in the background. Um, yeah, welcome. Today, we're going to talk about Adobe XD. Let's do it. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So wonderful to see you. Thank you for, or see you virtually. Uh, I tell all my students in my communications classes that all presentations to begin with a puppy or a baby. And this is our puppy that is headed our way in three weeks when she's old enough to leave mom. That's Phoebe. Uh, my name is Todd Taylor. Uh, and my title with Adobe is Pedagogical Evangelist. And my title at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill is uh, the Eliasson Distinguished Professor of English and Comparative Literature, where um, when I am working there full time, I often direct the first year writing program. And so um, my emphasis uh, in my professional career for over 25 years has been to better understand how literacy is evolving in response to information network and digital technologies. And um, within that, to develop and promote pedagogies that, uh, in a sentence or in a slogan, move students away from being passive, disconnected consumers of content to helping them become active, connected producers of ideas. And so, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about a really fascinating and awesome application called Adobe XD, which if you don't know, stands for experience design. And in order to do that, we're gonna and frame this as most effectively as I can for this audience, we're gonna do some polling so I can find out a little bit more about you. Um, Melissa, could you share the first poll and then share some of the results? And if everyone would please respond, we can talk about what we're learning there. Which of the following areas describes your primary role, education, digital design, IT professional, student, or other. And so if you will uh, please fill that out. Um, what we're gonna talk about today uh, is we're gonna, I'm gonna have a little bit of a framework, a conceptual or pedagogical or principal framework about the idea of asking a first year writing student to prototype a mobile app in a first year composition course. So think about that for a minute an English student in an English class is prototyping a mobile app. Um, now, many of you might be interested in this particular webinar from the perspective of someone who teaches design or UX, UI, and hopefully this will be in informative for you, but I just wanna declare out front, this is not going to be an, uh, an expert webinar on how to make expert UX designers. This is conceiving trying to conceive of how we might use these increasingly powerful uh, technologies and tools to drive transformation across the curriculum. And so, Melissa, do you have any poll results to share so far? Yes, we do. We are heavy in education today. So we've got 62% education. And then right after that, we've got actually 18% with digital design. And then the rest is single digits right now, but lots of education today. <laughs> Awesome. All right. And so if you do the second poll, now that we know we're mostly educators, two thirds roughly. Um, and so what, what you're going to get is we're going to do this initial kind of conceptual framework for about 10 minutes. We're going to talk about uh, what it means to be literate today. And then I'm going to give you an actual lesson plan and a, a module that you can then take in front of your class uh, to pick up this idea and run with it, I guess there theoretically as early as Tuesday if you wanted to. In the second poll, if you work in education, select all of the choices below that currently apply to you in significant ways. So hopefully this is uh, formatted as multiple choice or uh, multiple answer and not a single choice. So instructor, instructional designer, staffs, administrator, student. And student is intentionally meant to include graduate students uh, because that is certainly where I got my start in this world of uh, instructional technology as a graduate student teaching faculty members how to use an email account uh, in 1995, which was quite 
an event. It took two weeks back then to make that happen. And so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead with this presentation um, and to talk about what we're gonna do today. This webinar reimagines the classic problem solution paper as a mobile app using, uh, as a mobile app prototype using Adobe XD. Uh, the approach will be appropriate for our students and educators across the disciplines, wherever critical problem solving and design thinking might be used to achieve learning outcomes. And let me, let me emphasize this. The goal is not to learn how to prototype mobile apps. The goal is to use the power of mobile apps to leverage delivering learning outcomes anywhere across the curriculum. And so do you have any poll results to show so far, yes, Melissa? We do. Um, before I tell you, I am getting a message or two saying um, they can't access the poll. So I'm sorry that's happening to some of you guys. I am getting a lot of answers though. So some of you might try leaving the webinar and coming back um but Todd, no don't leave the webinar <laughs> don't leave the webinar Come back. Come i'll, back just, I'll just you um, i'll well, get the message those, those who are able to answer i've got a uh, 58 percent instructors and 43 percent instructional designer okay um, so almost an even split yeah. there good all yeah. right and and the next poll is the, is the next poll the one about first year writing um yes it is That's Let's put that one up there next. Okay. And so I've spent my professional life directing writing programs. And so this is something that is important to me. And I don't care about my, don't care about my feelings. I'm more interested in honesty here. If you're not an educator in the humanities, what is your feeling about the expense, experience of first year college composition courses? And, and, and try to relate this from a student's perspective, either what you might have meant experienced as a student or what you believe students' experiences are right now regarding first year college composition courses. Would most students, including yourself, say that they are fantastic, I, they're okay, they're ambivalent, they are disliked, or they are despised? And be honest here, don't worry about my feelings. I've, I've been living with this callous reality for a long time. And so as we're wrapping up that poll, um, the kind of assignment we're going to be talking about today uh, is aimed at students with absolutely no experience in uh, UX or UI design. Uh, the point of the approach is to promote engaged, transformative teaching and learning in any class with any set of learning outcomes. Uh, the assignment and the idea we're going to look at today, it would be appropriate for a very early first experience for future UX, UI people. Uh, but this approach is not intended really to be an introductory course in UX UI design. So what are the results of that poll? Well, we have 30% ambivalent. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the have, hot water mark. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we do have 40% of okay. okay. Um, yeah, and I mean, we've got a couple, we've got 6% despised actually. So we've got some strong feelings. <laughs> But a lot of not so strong feelings. <laughs> what about disliked? I didn't hear about that. Disliked 11. Okay. So we yeah. get the picture. And uh, thank you for that poll. If you could get it off my screen, I'd, that'd be great. Got it. Why is that? <laughs> Why is there, no, you know, a lot more people despising it than thinking it's wonderful? Uh, a lot of people believe it's because uh, that kind of experience is really academic too often in the worst sense of the word, meaning that they're doing something only to please a teacher in a very limited bandwidth that doesn't have much connection to the lives they're bringing to school or the futures they see ahead of them. And so to, to me and, and, and others who are in my position of, of leading writing programs, we're often thinking about how we can reverse that experience, how we can make it meaningful uh, and how we can make it deeply engaged. I just talked about the word engaged. And uh, this is a poll that was done very recently uh, by Inside Higher Education, where they surveyed 160 university and college presidents and chancellors. And they asked them about the experience that we're all sharing as educators about suddenly having to go virtual on the fly. Uh, how would you rate the level of challenge at your institution with going on fly. Let's look at the first piece there. Maintaining student engagement, 81%. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I've been an academic for many years, and I don't know that I've ever seen 81% of people who are academics agree on anything. That's a pretty significant number if you ask me. Look at the second piece, training faculty less familiar with digital delivery, 75%, and close behind ensuring student access at 70%. And so what we're about today is we're about taking the most perhaps powerful, relevant, and increasingly uh, influential technologies, such as what's available in Adobe Creative Cloud, and in this case, XD is an application within Adobe Creative Cloud, and making it accessible to people, and training faculty who are less familiar with these kinds of uh, experiences and epistemologies to find that they can get in this game, and they can be a part of knowledge making in these spaces so that we are directly uh, trying to promote student engagement. One way to think about Creative Cloud and XD uh, in today's current context of education is that we all know we have to have connectivity. We all need to invest in LMSs and Zoom meetings uh, so that we can, have, we can connect people and ideas can be exchanged. But where and how are those ideas gonna be incubated, cultivated, produced, and work? That's what XD can do. That's what Adobe Creative Cloud can do. It can pick up where your LMS and your Zoom conference leave off. And so the primary reason to enable students to create, make, and produce uh, across the curriculum is to promote student engagement and thus student success. Every piece of research I've seen on student success points to engagement in a class as the key metric to whether or not they will succeed in that class. And so uh, this is about uh, creating and enabling the new spaces to be engaging. Uh, what I'm going to take a brief look at a portfolio from a student uh, in one of my classes uh, who is now a rising senior. And what I'm going to show you is actually something that she made in her first year. This is the moment she came to campus. This was the kind of uh, writing experiences she had in the English department in her first year. And what this is, is everyone in this class um, told a story of community that was important to them. It had to be carefully researched, uh, had to include lots of evidence. Uh, and then they were to uh, package or repackage that story in six different modalities. First, as a photo gallery using Adobe Photoshop to edit it. Second, as a magazine article using Adobe InDesign uh, to repackage uh, the narrative or the story, sort so to speak, um, as a magazine article. And so this is what Valentina's magazine article looked like. Notice that you know these are really kind of beautiful, high production value kinds of works that we could never really afford to actually print out ourselves. Um, of course, there's making a documentary film. Right now, I would do that in Premiere Rush. There's telling the same story in the form of a website. These days, I would use it in the Spark page. And then there's also telling the same story uh, in the form of a podcast. This particular story is about uh, the Varsity Theater. Uh, the whole project is called Running Varsity. And um, uh, it tells the story of a historic theater that was going to be bulldozed but was saved. Uh, by an entrepreneur. What you're looking at now is the mobile app version of this story. So this was made using Adobe XD, and this is a link to that XD project. It's formatted from the screen of a mobile app. And it tells the same story in this in a different modality using a mobile app. Here's the a menu like you would have on a mobile app. And so it browses all around this particular story, right? And so uh, in the chat pod, if you would please um, give me your vote uh, of the six different applications that students used in this class to tell their stories. The first choice is Photoshop. Second choice is InDesign desktop publishing to make the magazine article. The next one is Premiere to make a video. The next one is Audition to make a podcast. The next one is Spark to make a website. And the last one is XD to make a mobile app. Of those six modalities, which do you think was by far their favorite? Film, podcast, magazine article, mobile app, 
uh, what did I forget? Magazine article, uh, photo gallery. Okay, so we'll wait for some responses to that question in the chat pod. Um, now, that's a bit of a leading question in a seminar, a webinar about mobile apps. This was actually quite surprising to me. Uh, it was. It was the mobile app of these six different modalities that was so important to students. And why would that be? I thought to myself. Now, it, I've always been, uh, you know, fascinated by filmmaking, and I've, you know, been involved with service learning, documentary filmmaking, and telling stories of community and social justice for over 20 years. And you know, I grew up idolizing Steven Spielberg and Star Wars and The Godfather, and I wanted to be a filmmaker like that, right? And the, and, the, and my theory is that that's because that was where that was really powerful. And there was no, it was inaccessible to me. There was no way I could do that. And so, in you know, crudely Marxist terms, those people were controlling the means of production in our world today. And I wanted to be a player in that space. I wanted to, you know, touch that magic. And so my theory for why students like the XD unit so much uh, compared to the other modalities is that, um, it has that kind of power for them. Before they took my class, they had no way to even begin to prototype or play in that space of that small screen uh, that is so powerful and prevalent in the world today. They've all grown up making videos and putting them on YouTube and Instagram since they were probably born. Making movies now isn't that special. But being able to control that mobile app space that's something pretty unique. And so here enters Adobe XD, which is a, uh, an absolutely amazing uh, experience. It's quite different than a lot of the other applications. And if you ask me, I think it's the future of all of Creative Cloud, the kind of interface, the kind of experience, the kind of engineering, the kind of design, the kind of creativity that you can uh, generate through XD. Uh, when XD came out, it had a great tagline, which said uh, um, something like being able to create at the speed of thought, uh, which I thought was amazing. And uh, I had the great privilege of actually meeting the CEO of Adobe for, I think, maybe five minutes once. Um, and I don't know how or why, but the conversation immediately got to XD and how I, I asked him to reveal whether or not he thinks all of Creative Cloud is going to eventually collapse into XD, and that's going to be the one interface for all of this power. And we kind of laughed about that because it wasn't true yet. But that's my conspiracy theory, um, that the experience of XD is just so different and powerful that it's really something to try. In all of my other webinars, I have been sort of leading up to this kind of deeper dive into these applications where so much of the action is happening. The first webinar I did in this series was about Spark and how you can use that to create lesson plans. And then increasingly, we've got deeper and deeper into concepts such as this one here that I gave a couple of weeks ago, trying to explain Adobe Creative Cloud as a, as a kind of mobile makerspace. And so if you've, if you've heard about a makerspace on campus, they often have stations like a prototyping station where you can uh, make things in 3D printers, uh, large scale format printing. They used to have Photoshop, uh, photo dark rooms. They don't do that anymore. They often have green screen studios and sound booths. Uh, they always have a space to collaborate. And in one particular, uh, you know, more than one particular makerspaces, they're industrial showing machines. What happens now, though, in the, in the new context is that as valuable and as wonderful as these incubators of knowledge production are, they may have been made kind of obsolete in some ways by the need to be able to do this kind of engaged, deeply entrepreneurial, active student learning remotely at a distance on a smart device, on a smartphone, wherever a student might be. And so that, that portfolio that we just looked at, we kind of, hopefully, I don't know if this animation will work uh, through the screen lag, but if we can think about these stations in a virtual makerspace as being XD for prototyping, InDesign for printing, Photoshop for photo editing, 
Premiere Pro for video editing, Audition for podcast editing, Spark for, I like the idea of stitching things together, and the entire Creative Cloud itself as a collaboration space. That explains the orientation that we're looking at here in thinking about the idea of what XD could do anywhere across the curriculum, not just in a, in a design class. Whenever we're thinking about any technology or any choice we're making, we always want to consider the, <clears throat> excuse me, the affordances and limitations of those choices. There's always going to be something that's enabled and other things that are going to be restricted. And so we want to reflect on those uh, before we make the choice, but then after we make the choice. And so in, in using XD in the way that I'm talking about today, um, here are the advantages or the affordances I see of doing that. Um, the first is what we've already been talking about, students participating in the modalities that matter. Again, in crudely Marxist terms, these are the means of production and now education in our cultures and economies today. And I've always thought that it was my job, speaking for myself as a faculty member, to help my students be able to play in those spaces, to be able to control those means of production. It is possible to use XD as a really great way to teach novice, nodal, or let's call it web design with a pretty flat learning curve compared to coding HTML, or even I would say using something like WordPress. So you can you can begin to teach the basic principles of, of that kind of design and building in a space that's pr private. Because think about it, most of the time when you're building a web page, for instance, uh, in you know in WordPress, you know you can password protect it sometimes, but that's out in public and in, in educational spaces. A lot of times we need to do things that are private. The other affordance that XD has it is that it is it is next generation engineering experience and design in terms of an application. Uh, the experience you have uh, with this is nothing like I shouldn't say nothing like it is it's much more pleasant than the experience of trying to learn Photoshop 15 years ago, where the air, you know, the interface was overwhelming. You know, there was no clue of what you're supposed to do next. As soon as you clicked on something, you went down a rabbit hole and you couldn't find your way out. This new experience has been engineered from the first line of code to be really intuitive. And so as you click on the text tool, automatically the control panel for uh, text pops up, right? That kind of experience is amazing. The kind of learning outcomes that can be um, enabled through XD include uh, creative problem solving, digital literacy and agility, and project management. Uh, the limitation of it is uh, that these are just prototypes. In, in most cases, well, really in all cases, they are not actual mobile apps. Actual real live mobile apps take coding and they have to, they have you know, back ends to them that interface with data systems. But this is a professional grade tool. This is what professional mobile app designers are using to design those experiences now. It's just that you're not gonna then go buy this app on, on you know, in the app store because it's not, doesn't have that level of functionality behind it. There are some functions missing. Uh, and, you know, for instance, right now you can't put in a hyperlink, which is kind of a following to us but I know that there's a really good re engineering reason for it. I just don't know what there is. Um, it is certainly compared to Adobe Spark, just a little bit beyond the novice beginner of the learning curve. You have to maybe have a little bit of media production experience to get going with this fast, but it's certainly, I would say, below average in terms of complexity. I think it's much harder to get going in, in audition or Illustrator than it is to get going in XD with the right instruction. And so in terms of learning outcomes, limitations, uh, the experiences I've had as a teacher are that sometimes there can be potential distraction that, I, you know, I'm, what we're really doing is we're taking a classic English paper assignment, you know, frame a problem, research and propose a solution, something that's been done uh, for years and years and years to the point that it just becomes dead. And, you know, we're going to open that up by saying, well, not only are you going to do all that research and thinking and writing, but you're also going to present your idea in the form of a mobile app. 
that solves a problem and a solution, uh, that frames a problem and, and solves a solution. And so the problem is these technologies are so compelling that people may learn lose sight of what they're trying to learn in the first place. Okay, and so what you're gonna get now is something that I haven't done in any of my other webinars. I'm actually gonna give you the full tutorial uh, that is available online uh, through the PDF handout that is attached there. And this PDF handout that I'm gonna actually uh, show right now on the screen is a step-by-step -step instruction that is linked uh, to a video that we're gonna look at real uh, quickly over the next 20 minutes. Um, and we won't go all the way to the end of it, Melissa, I'll tell you when to stop it so we can, we can regroup and have some conversation. The idea is this is a ready to go lesson plan. And what you're gonna learn from this lesson is like how I go about teaching this kind of thing to novices and beginners where um, what we've done is we've taken the basic moves of an app design, which are creating artboards, then organizing the artboards into a structure to create a, a, an interactive design, uh, and then um, putting content into that and defining the way all the different interactions between all the pieces work in a very simplified genre. Uh, I always insist that the way to do these kinds of projects is they need to be real. They need to be real problems and real solutions. And so I, I went downstairs to my college aide son today and I asked him, you know, if, if we were to do a, a problem solution assignment right now, what problem would you try to solve? And I, I predicted he might ask something about, you know, COVID or something, but no one really wants to, you know, do a have another episode on finding toilet paper or how to wash your hands. Uh, and the idea was, you know, what would be really useful now, right now, really useful problem for a lot of people to solve is like how to get a job. And what's the solution for that? And the solution we're going to explore is actually thinking about an interactive mobile app version of a business card. And I'm going to use myself because uh, it wouldn't be right to share the privacy of a student. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how I would go about the problem solution problem of differentiating yourself in today's digital market by creating a, a kind of digital asset that no one else is likely to have which is a mobile app version of a business card where in your own words you're describing who you are and what you're about hi everyone thanks for watching Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development and click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.